In November 2010, the PSA bacterial infection was discovered on kiwifruit vines in the Bay of Plenty. It had a severe impact on the region. John Cook is a grower and chair of the Taipoki Priority Zone Action Group. He's also been working with the industry group KVH, which represents the interests of kiwifruit growers. We're learning every day. Every day is different, and every day brings a new way of trying to understand this disease. We're learning as much as we can from the Italians. The Italians are learning as much as they can from us. And at this stage, we're all struggling to find a real answer to it. The most we know is that it's spread by wind and rain, essentially by water, and so it's supposedly carried on green, green plant material um, from orchard to orchard, but predominantly it's spread by wind and rain. The orchard hygiene and spray programs are set by Kiwifruit Vine Health as a, uh, which, which is our industry organisation that was set up by Zespri to guide us through this particular disease. Those of us that are in the priority zone are certainly having to show greater levels of orchard hygiene than, say, the others in, outside of the zone. But at this point in time, we're all really, I guess, trying to create or, or follow best practice. What we're seeing here now is bins that are arriving from the field. Normally they used to just be tipped and then returned back to the orchard, but now as part of the PSA requirement, as part of the protocol, we do need to have the bins sterilised before being returned back to the orchard. So a grower doesn't want to have a bin returned from the pack house with any PSA material in the bin. So that's now part of this process that is required to have all of the bins sterilised as they come off the belt. The key to it is to ensure that the post-harvest operator, who is your supplier, ensures that there is no material whatsoever, either off the, off the uh, risers, off anywhere part of it, that can actually then get back into the bin, even after the bin has been sterilised. This cane has been affected by PSA essentially through some sort of infestation through a cut or an insect bite and the tip of the cane it's died back all the way from all the way through to here. This is what growers are looking for, this is the first sign of it. This is a little bit more advanced. What we would have seen was, was leaves starting to fail uh, at an earlier stage than this say 10 days ago and within a 10 day period it's gone from a completely healthy cane all the way back to, to this stage here and you can see that there is a bit of shrivel back to here but the balance of the cane all the way along through here has shown quite significant dieback. Just here is a cicada bite and this you can see has opened up the external surface of the cane to allow bacteria to come in there. These insect bites come in, in essentially through November, December and early January and this becomes then the entry point for the bacteria. What we tried to do was to create a priority zone that essentially ring fenced the area where the outbreak was and where the most at risk orchards were likely to be. So that was the identified area and from that point then certain plans were put in place to, to manage those orchards and try and mitigate any risk going forward. We're talking about 88 orchards that are now confirmed with PSAV, and that, well, that was those were the latest uh, figures I had. Um, but that also included um, an orchard out of Pukahina. So although that one was outside the, the original designated area, predominantly all of the orchards are within the small radius inside the priority zone. This, this block was within 10 days of being harvested, but the vines just weren't able to carry the fruit for that um, extra 10 days, and so the fruit's been dropped on the ground, the canopy's been removed, and we're now seeing a completely clean orchard, just with the grafts um, ready to um, shut down for the winter. The canopy's removed to control the inoculum levels, 
for further infestation in the district. The vines themselves weren't capable of surviving carrying the load. The, the quality of the fruit was deteriorating. So in, in essence, the vines, the fruit had to be removed and the vine had to be removed as well. What we're trying to do is to remove all plant material, either off the orchard floor or out of the canopy. So you'll notice that up in the canopy, there's no leaves, no residue of any canes left. And so they've all been buried, removed off the property so that there's no further risk of any bacterial infection coming off those. The tops of the trunks are then sprayed with a copper. The whole orchard is sprayed with a copper so that all of the trunk, all of the cut surface has a copper spray on it to provide some sort of protection for prevention of bacteria entering. Most of the sprays that we've used um, to date have been copper based sprays. There are some bacteria side sprays that are available. There's also some supposed fertiliser programs that have coppers in them, but essentially it's a copper based spray that um, is providing most of the protection as a cover spray before a, an event or after an event. And so most of us are using those. In relation to whether there's some overuse of coppers, uh, that's an unknown and we are aware that there is a different viewpoint to this, that there may be some overuse. That's still yet to be proven, but with the absence of any real data on, uh, from any point of view, we're doing the best we can given the information that we have um, today. We knew that PSA existed in other parts of the world. We didn't really understand in the first instance until the Italian isolate, it's now called the virulent isolate, PSAV, but when it was first identified in late December, early January on some of these orchards, uh, and this one in particular in late December, we then started to realise that um, this was going to be some serious issue for us. For a period of time we felt that um, we were quite relaxed about it, um, but as time progressed and then it became evident in our own, in our own vines that uh, it was starting to affect the vines um, to the extent much more than just the leaf spotting that we saw initially. Um, that's when we started to realise that we were going to face with the difficulty of cutting vines out and starting again. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.